Hey everyone, my name is Oreg. I'm from Petrum and Carnegie Mellon University. Today I'll be talking to you about Pollux, co-adaptive cluster scheduling for good put optimized deep learning. This is joint work with my colleagues Sang, Suhas, Willy, Jerome, Hao, Greg, and Eric. Many users today train their deep learning models using a shared compute cluster. In this setting, a cluster scheduler decides how to allocate cluster resources to training jobs in order to achieve objectives such as minimizing training time, maximizing cluster utilization, or ensuring fairness between users or jobs. Efficient scheduling is particularly important in deep learning clusters because the jobs are long, compute intensive, and require expensive hardware such as GPUs. Typically, a user submits a training job by requesting a certain number of GPUs. The scheduler will find that many GPUs in the cluster to run the job. But deciding the number of GPUs is challenging because the best decision depends on dynamic factors such as cluster contention or the job scalability, which requires expert knowledge to know ahead of time. Knowing the number of GPUs, the user often needs to tune certain training parameters, such as the batch size and learning rate, in order to obtain reasonable training performance. The best allocation of GPUs and the best training parameters are tightly dependent on each other, and their interaction is not managed by existing cluster schedulers. Pollux automatically and dynamically allocates resources while considering cluster-wide training performance and fairness. At the same time, Pollux tunes the batch size and learning rate for each individual training job to make efficient use of its allocated resources. Pollux is co-adaptive, meaning that cluster-wide scheduling decisions account for the tuning happening at the per job level, and in turn, individual jobs are tuned adaptively to the resources allocated by the cluster scheduler. Pollux reduces the need for manual job configuration and improves average training time in shared clusters by 37 to 50%. I'll briefly review the necessary background on deep learning training before describing the design of Pollux and presenting our evaluation results. Data parallelism is commonly used to run distributed deep learning training. The deep learning model is replicated across all GPUs and a subset of the training data set called a mini batch is partitioned across each GPU. The each GPU computes the gradient of the loss function using its own partition of the mini batch. Then the local gradients are averaged across the GPUs by communicating over the network. Each GPU then updates their copy of the model with one step of gradient descent. Finally, these steps are repeated until the training job is completed. The batch size and learning rate are training parameters which are typically set by the user. Deep learning jobs scale sublinearly and allocating too many GPUs to a job doesn't help to increase its system throughput. In this example, throughput stops increasing after roughly five GPUs. In general, it's hard to know how many GPUs to use because the point at which scalability stops depends on the model structure, cluster hardware, training batch size, and several other factors. A common strategy to improve scalability is to use a larger batch size, which enables higher training throughput when using more GPUs. However, increasing the batch size has several drawbacks. First, it requires the learning rate to be carefully tuned in order to keep the model quality consistent. Second, Increasing the batch size decreases what's called statistical efficiency during training. This graph shows the number of iterations required to train the model versus the batch size used. Perfect statistical efficiency would mean that the number of iterations is inversely proportional to the batch size. However, the actual number of iterations diverges from this ideal scenario when the batch size becomes larger. This gap in the statistical efficiency translates to extra computation required to train the model. Lastly, even further increasing the batch size can result in worse generalization ability of the final model. In summary, as the batch size becomes larger, the system throughput increases, but the statistical efficiency decreases. So the overall training performance peaks when the batch size is large enough to achieve a reasonable system throughput and small enough to achieve a reasonable statistical efficiency. Another interesting phenomenon is that the statistical efficiency increases during training, especially for larger batch sizes. This means that the optimal batch size changes dynamically, sometimes increasing by 10 times or more near the end of training. What this all means for cluster scheduling 
is that the pre preferred GPU allocation for deep, deep learning training depends on the batch size, while the preferred batch size also depends on the allocated GPUs. They are independent in interdependent factors. The preferred GPU allocation also depends on uh, cluster-wide factors such as fairness and resource contention, while the preferred batch size also depends on per job factors such as scalability and statistical efficiency. It's hard for users to account for all these interdependent factors when submitting a job, and a cluster scheduler that jointly controls these factors can better optimize for deep learning training. Pollux co-adaptively allocates cluster-wide resources and tunes per job batch sizes and learning rates. Pollux learns predictive models for training performance, both in terms of its system throughput and statistical efficiency. Next, Pollux uses these predictive models to jointly optimize cluster-wide resource allocations, batch sizes, and learning rates. Pollux periodically reconfigures the jobs in the cluster to adapt to changing conditions in the cluster or in the jobs themselves. A key idea in Pollux is to optimize for a new measure of deep learning training performance called the good put. Good put accounts for both system throughput and statistical efficiency and is expressed simply as the product between them. The parameters of the good put function are, optim are automatically determined by Pollux for each job during training. These include the GPU allocation, the per GPU batch size and gradient accumulation which is used to support batch sizes larger than the GPU memory limit. In the next few slides, I'll describe how Pollux can predict the good put of different configurations. First, Pollux expresses the throughput as a function involving the time to compute the local gradients on each GPU, the time needed for network communication, and the number of gradient accumulation steps. Gamma is a parameter which models the degree of overlap between computation and communication which is a performance optimization often implemented in deep learning frameworks. Pollux fits the throughput model to performance metrics profiled during training and accurately predicts the throughput across various numbers of GPUs and batch sizes. It also accurately predicts the effect of gradient accumulation, as well as the effect of GPUs being allocated on different nodes versus the same node. This enables Pollux to automatically set the right number of GPUs and batch size, use gradient accumulation to increase the batch size beyond the GPU memory limit, and pack a job's GPUs onto fewer nodes in order to minimize network overhead. Pollux also models the statistical efficiency of each job. The user provides a static baseline batch size M0, and the efficiency of other batch sizes are measured relative to M0. In practice, the user can simply pick a small M0 without worrying about system throughput or, statistic or scalability issues. They can rely on Pollux to pick a larger batch size that better balances system throughput with statistical efficiency. Pollux uses a metric called the gradient noise scale as an input to its statistical efficiency model. Intuitively, higher gradient noise during training means using a larger mini batch can better estimate the gradient and therefore is more efficient. Gradients tend to have relatively more noise near convergence, so using a larger mini batch becomes more efficient later in training. The top graph shows an example of statistical efficiency measured while training an image net model using two different batch sizes. We observe lower efficiency for the larger batch size, which improves later on in training. The bottom graph shows that Pollux can accurately predict what the observed efficiency would be if training using a different batch size. And putting it all together, Pollux can predict what the good put of a training job would be using a certain configuration without running that configuration ahead of time. Using the good, to, good put function, Pollux actively tunes each job by finding the configuration that maximizes its predicted good put. This graph shows a slice of Pollux's good put function for an example job across a range of different batch sizes, which can be easily optimized. Pollux changes the batch size dynamically during training, and that means the learning rate must be retuned to keep a consistent model quality. Several learning rate scaling rules are established in the deep learning research community, and Pollux lets the user select a suitable one based on their training task. 
When allocating cluster-wide resources to jobs, Pollux optimizes a fitness function, which is a mean over the performance of all jobs in the cluster. A parameter P can be used by cluster administrator to control the degree of fairness between different jobs. The performance of each job is calculated as the speed up of good put over an exact fair share of cluster resources. Doing this normalizes the good put so that it's comparable across different training jobs. Note that the speed up accounts for job level tuning by considering the best achievable good put for each uh, allocation of GPUs. Pollux searches for cluster allocations using a meta heuristic algorithm, which is currently implemented using a genetic algorithm. Pollux also makes additional scheduling considerations, such as avoiding frequent reallocations to reduce the overhead of checkpointing and restarting jobs, and avoiding assigning multiple distributed jobs to GPUs on the same node to reduce the overhead of network interference. A primary benefit of Pollux is its abil ability to automatically configure training jobs in shared clusters. In our evaluation, an important objective is to demonstrate that even if all jobs are given ideal static configurations, Pollux can still outperform alternative schedulers. We used real world job distributions and a mix of different training tasks. We also manually tuned the number of GPUs, batch sizes, learning rates, and gradient accumulation for all jobs ahead of time. We emphasize that this is done to set up a strong baseline for comparison and does not help Pollux in our experiments. We compared Pollux with two baseline deep learning schedulers on a 64 GPU cluster using 160 jobs submitted over an eight hour period. First, Optimus elastically adapts resources for jobs based on throughput and cluster contention, but ignores the batch size and learning rate. Second, Teresius ke uh, keeps the number of GPUs fixed, but can pause and resume jobs based on their GPU time metrics. Even when both baselines use the manually pre-configured jobs, they are outperformed by Pollux, which achieves 37 to 50% faster average training time. And for more realistic job configurations, Pollux reduces the training, job, uh, the training time by more than 70%. One source of improvement in Pollux can be seen by observing the cluster-wide statistical efficiency. In this graph, the y-axis is the statistical efficiency averaged across all running jobs, while the x-axis is the time. During periods of high cluster contention, the GPUs available for each job are fewer. In this scenario, Pollux shrinks the batch size for those jobs and prefers to train with higher statistical efficiency. On the other hand, during periods of low cluster contention, Pollux accepts lower statistical efficiency in favor of using many GPUs to train with higher system throughput. And balancing between the low throughput, high efficiency and high, efficient, uh, high throughput, low efficiency modes of training is a key trade-off made by Pollux. Our paper has many more experiments, including an evaluation of fairness between jobs, sensitivity to various scheduling parameters, Pollux's performance on hyperparameter tuning workloads, and how Pollux can improve auto-scaling in cloud environments. In conclusion, Pollux co-optimizes both cluster-wide and per-job parameters for deep learning training. Pollux introduces the good put, which is a measure of training performance that combines both system throughput and statistical efficiency. Pollux improves average training time in shared clusters by 37 to 50%, even against unrealistically strong baselines. Pollux is open sourced at the listed URL. Thank you for listening.